Welcome to the Ohio High School Film Room presented by Prep Hoops Ohio. I am Michael Roth and I am alongside Jagger Landers of Antwerp High School. Jagger, last season your team went 25 and 1. You had a great run all the way to the regional part of the tournament. Just what was that experience like as a sophomore playing on a team so successful? Um, it was it was great. I mean, I got to play with my brother and it was a dream come true. And we knew that we were um, going to be pretty good. We just had to prove it to people and uh, it was it was awesome. Yeah, and that kind of leads into my next question. What was it like playing with your older brother who's now a Division three college basketball player? Just what things do you learn from him uh, either in the past two years or even just growing up uh, through grade school on the court? Um, Javen's taught me a lot of things. I mean, he's taught me how to uh, play play basketball at the varsity ba at the level. And uh, last year was my first year playing varsity. So he really helped me get into that and uh, helped me prepare throughout the summer. And he, I mean, he's helped me grow as a person just with, by playing basketball with him. We are only five games into your junior season. And right now you're averaging 13.8 points per game and shooting almost 75% from two point range. Um, you have a very big height advantage playing in a small town league in Northwest Ohio. Uh, just going over those clips, it, it's a bunch of easy buckets, but um, what, what's the biggest thing that you take away from those clips, uh, knowing that you have a size advantage and you wanna finish and it seems like you do a good job around the basket of making the layups when you have that size advantage. I think watching those clips, um, a lot of them, um, me catching the ball, gathering myself with a dribble or just um, pump faking, uh, getting other defenders off balance, uh, seeing the ball, going to where the ball will be, uh, rebounding the ball, going up strong, jumping higher than other people, uh, getting rebounds. I think a lot of those clips show. Yeah, and um, I didn't see very much use of the left hand. That would probably be one thing. I'd like to eventually see uh, out of your g game. Uh, it's not like the biggest deal because you do finish with two hands um, on the left side, which helps prevent the shots from being blocked. But um, I thought there were maybe a couple opportunities where you could use your left hand. Um, that just didn't happen. So that was just one kind of little nitpick that I was like, maybe um, see a couple left-handed finishes in there as well. Yeah, I can agree with that. Jagger, a lot of high school post players, they really don't look to use their size advantage in the post. But one thing I do like about your game is you're not afraid to use your butt, seal a defender who you have a height advantage over and get the ball in the post and go right up. Is that something that your coach kind of preaches to you? Make sure you get on the block and use that height advantage that you have? Yeah, um, our head coach, Doug Billman, he's, uh, he, we really try to get looks inside for me. And then my dad, he's, all, he's our uh, big man coach. So my whole life, we've been working with uh, sealing people, um, being smart about it. So if the defender's in a certain position, seal them when the ball's getting swung and get good body positions. That way you don't have to fight over somebody to make a layup. So that way it's just an easy right or left hand layup facing the basket. Yeah, and a couple of these clips here, you get fouled. That's a, something you are shooting. Um, let me pull it up right now. 77% from the free throw line. It is only a 22 shot sample. Um, so that number could go up or go down just as you take more shots this year. But that's really encouraging from uh, an evaluator's perspective, knowing that uh, when you do go to the free throw line, you're more than not going to cash in on those opportunities and you're not afraid of a little contact because uh, there's going to be a lot of smaller guards swiping at your hands when you're trying to go up for those shots. So uh, cashing in when you get those free throw opportunities is really big. Yeah. And one thing we work on in practice is really keeping the ball high, especially with my high advantage is whether it's rebounding the ball or getting a good lob into the post, keeping the ball high and not taking it down for the guards to, to swipe at. Cause you know, that double team is going to be coming, uh, keeping the ball high and finishing off the top of the backboard is one thing we really work on in practice. So we know you post up a lot throughout the game on a couple of these clips. The passes just don't get to you. Um, I don't think your hands are a problem. Like some young bigs, they, they really have trouble catching the ball. Um, but I do think in a couple of these clips here, you could have done a better job of meeting the basketball. That, that's something that sometimes you do. And in these clips, you obviously didn't. So that, that would just be one thing. 
that I would say just become more consistent at it, do it every time instead of just most of the time? Is that something that you kind of gather uh, from these plays? Yeah, when I was looking, when I look at these clips, I think uh, I get myself buried too deep. I, I keep banging in too deep and getting myself too far. And I really need to, one thing I do work on actually is releasing in reverse pivot, front pivot and facing the basket is something that I need to work on a lot more. And it's something that I, we do work on in practice. Um, that's a good uh, jump shot right there too, 10, 15 feet from the basket. Um, but also watching some of these clips, uh, I, I need to um, see who's doubling. A lot of them you can see uh, going and getting the ball a lot of the times when the balls go out of bounds. Uh, communicating with our passers about what hand I need to, needs to go to is one another thing that we always work on. Yeah, and then the last clip here that I want to mention, um, you actually do do a nice job with the seal, good ball placement, and then uh, you get a charge taken by a, a very little guard. Uh, I think that was the only charge uh, that was taken against you, so not a huge problem, but just wanted to highlight that sometimes you're going up against these, uh, like, that kid's probably, what, 5'10", down there in the paint and uh, you didn't even bulldoze him, but he just kind of slid under there and uh, took the charge. A little bit unfortunate for you because uh, like in college and AAU, you're probably not gonna be uh, faced with uh, such tiny defenders. And obviously any guard can take a charge, but that was pretty much that kid's only option in the post. Yeah, I just need to look over top of him and look for a cutter or look for an open three on the other side or just or shoot above him versus trying to go through him. We are very early days into your junior season, but you are 0 for 9 from three-point range so far. Uh, like I said earlier, you shoot 77% from the free throw line, and there's no real noticeable mechanical issues with your jump shot. Uh, so, so in my opinion, it's really just a matter of time before you start knocking down three-pointers. Is uh, That's something that you're kind of like, yeah, I'm going to make shots. I just need to see a couple go in, and uh, more will start falling through than that. Yeah, I think I just need to get in the gym a little bit more and shooting, which I have been. And um, I am i don't know, I just need to make one in a game and hopefully we go up from there. And then one clip I did want to highlight was this end of the half uh, kind of step back jumper. You, you kind of get lost uh, a little bit with the basketball when you do finally take that step back. Um, were you just like, was that a problem with the catch? Because uh, it seemed like you were about to go into the jumper and then kind of hesitated. And with two seconds left, you can't really be doing that. Yeah, I I, re I don't know if I really knew what I was doing there. Uh, I just knew we were short time and we were getting ready to run a play. But and then I think everyone looked at me and they were like, um, I don't know what to do. So I just I was trying to get by him with my left and I saw somebody cut. But I thought I saw somebody double and I wanted to pass it. But as soon as I saw it pass it, I think there was like a second left. So and then I just shot it. I probably should have jumped off two feet and got a good shot up. Jagger, you showed a couple flash plays with your ball handling that had some success. Um, this one play against Delpho St. John, where you have a couple between the legs dribbles, and then you beat your defender baseline and finish was uh, one of your most impressive plays from these three games that I did watch. Just uh, looking back at that play, uh, is that just a bunch of skill work dribbling and uh, showing things that maybe you can do in practice? You can also uh, use that in the game to get an easy bucket. Yeah, that's something that um, I need. I want to get better at is beating people off the dribble because uh, as much post work as I do, people put bigger pe their, their biggest guys on me. And if they're not as, as, as athletic as I am, then I'd like to start beating them off the dribble to open up um, a cutter or draw a double and put a kick out or make a layup or something. In just five games, you already have 13 assists and I'm sure uh, your, your team doesn't score the most points per game. So I'm sure there are more potential assists that you just aren't getting shown in the stat sheet. Uh, a couple of these kickouts in the post, especially against uh, Pandoria, uh, were very impressive. Was that something that maybe your coach said either pregame or after the first quarter, hey, they're doubling you? you should look to kick out in the post because it seemed like you had a lot of success uh, when the double team comes of making the right read. Yeah, it's something that we've talked that we started talking about at the beginning of this year was us coming off of a great season and me coming off of a really good season too. We knew that teams would be focusing on me and I really had to share the ball and 
use that double team that would come to me in the post as a positive and look for open shots. Yeah, and then this last clip against Ottaville, definitely your most impressive assist. Uh, I love how you kind of make that quick jab and go. You see Thorbine uh, come over to the middle and he's help side and your teammate cuts to the basket. It's a pretty simple read, but uh, a kid your size at six foot seven, making those couple dribble moves and having the awareness to dump the ball off to his open teammate is something that uh, you don't see every day. So that was really a play that uh, sparked my eye when I watched on film. Yeah, and that's something that I'd like to improve on and be able to do uh, consistently every game. You do defend on the perimeter. A lot of teams in your conference, they probably want to play five-out basketball. We got a couple plays here of you just pressuring ball handlers and getting steals. Uh, on the second clip here, uh, you get fouled. I was a little disappointed that you didn't go up, but then on the third play, uh, you steal the ball from the ball handler to a sweet spin move into a Euro step and one finish. Just break down how you're able to execute that play because that was, in my opinion, your most impressive play of the three games I watched. The offense that Pandora ran, they would always kick out from the post. So we were trying to pressure the ball and not let them kick out as much. So when I, when I knew I was pressuring that guy, I saw the ball go that way, so I went for it. Um, the way to keep the ball was spin move, so I was going. And then I wanted to attack the middle and see what the defender did. And he kind of went towards the middle, so I wanted to Euro over him. And he kind of bumped me, but I tried to stay strong and use my body and finish off the top of the glass there. You average over one steal and one block per game so far during your junior season. Um, on a couple of these plays, you really send a smaller guard uh, just block the crap out of them at the rim. Um, you're obviously facing kids less athletic and um, less explosive than you would in a U season. Uh, how, how do you balance not being too block happy uh, in the post against uh, these kids that maybe you get a couple times and avoid getting fouls or just kind of falling for pump fakes? Uh, I think this is something that um, improves um, my knowledge of the game and uh, knowing who's going to go up for a shot and who's not, because a lot of times in the summer or in the, sorry, my school season, when, I mean, you're playing smaller people, you expect to get pump faked a lot. So you just have to stand straight up. But the times that they do go up, I try to go up with them and, uh, I really try I try not to foul him, I guess you could say. There's a one clip in there from Pandora where the guy shoots it and I just try standing straight up and the ball goes right in my hands. So that helps being lengthy and tall. So, I mean, I'm really being smart with it and knowing when to jump and when not to. Yeah, during the high school season, you can be the second jumper and still block shots. Uh, you, you don't have to anticipate the shots like maybe you would have to in AAU. You can kind of wait, read. You see that he's going up for the shot, then you can elevate and uh, meet the ball at its highest point because you're going to get higher than that five foot eleven guard will for whatever school in your conference will. On these two clips, you're defending one of the top players in your part of the state, Josh Thorbon, committed to Findlay University. Um, on the second clip, he really does a nice job of using the pump fake and. Uh, yeah, you kind of bit a little bit at his head fake. Um, I, I'm not going to really nitpick these plays because this is a senior who uh, averages 20-plus points a game and is a great player. But uh, just wanted to highlight a couple plays where he beats you on ball before we head into your help side defense on Thorbon, which did help slow him down because uh, do, do you remember how many points Thorbon had against you guys in this game? 13 or 14 maybe. Yeah, I thought in general your team did a did a good job. So, yeah, don't want to be too critical of these two plays where he scored. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to highlight them. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I just – I'm just watching these. I really need to stay down on my feet and wall up, uh, keep my hands high, and um, don't react. And like I mentioned, your team did a really nice job of shutting down one of the top scorers in Northwest Ohio. On these clips here, uh, the first one was a – poor foul call in my opinion looked like you were straight up uh, so I disagreed with that one um, but you use your length well and 
it seemed like having that second defender there made things a lot easier for you guys. And then on the final clip, uh, you get a switch and he kind of settles for a tough step back, tough step back jumper. And you use your length to contest the shot, um, not giving him uh, too much space where he was able to drive past you. So yeah, some very positive defensive clips of you against uh, one of the top offensive players in Northwest Ohio. Uh, is, is there any comments that you have to say about these clips? Um, not really. I mean, he's one of the, he's a really good player, a really good shooter and really got to pressure him when you play defense. And we knew that. So uh, when I was switched on him or I knew he was driving, I knew I had to be there and make him give up the ball. At your size, it's no surprise that you are kind of a double-double machine, averaging 11 rebounds per game so far this season. What, what are some keys for you to, obviously, you're, you're tall, so you're expected to rebound, but what are some things that you feel like you go above and beyond to help add to those rebounding totals? Um, uh, seeing where the ball is going to go, um, knowing that if it's a long shot, it's going to be a long rebound. Um, always seeing your guy from boxing him out, uh, really um, giving it 100% to only let them have one shot. Uh, we don't want to let them have any offensive rebounds. So defensive rebounds are big, but I also love getting offensive rebounds. I mean, it's one of my big goals this year is to uh, out rebound everybody on the floor and uh, limit the other team. Sweet. Um, yeah, so that will wrap it up for this episode of the Ohio High School Film Room. Uh, I would assume that for you, biggest goal right now is to do what you can do last year and bring home a state title to Antwerp in one of your last two years. Yeah, uh, that's that's the end goal. And uh, I think that we got to work a lot harder than we are right now, but I think we're on the right track and uh, we just need to keep proving ourselves.